We only talk about the big games each week here on DJ Football. That's why I never thought we'd be talking Broncos Texans. <laughs> but here we are. We'll discuss it next on DJ Football. The NFL Network's Daniel Jeremiah. I am Ryan Brown. This is DJ Football. It's presented each week by MyBookie.ag. Code next round when you sign on at MyBookie.ag, and they will match your initial deposit at 50% up to $1,000. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with MyBookie.ag. Boy, this game came out of nowhere. You take me back about a month, month and a half, and tell me we're talking Broncos Texans on this show. I would have laughed at you, DJ, but boy, these two teams have surprised in the way they've played of late. See, I'll disagree with you on this. I thought personally that I would be talking about both these teams because I'd be looking forward to the draft <laughs> and I'd be talking about them having high picks and what do they yeah. do with Russell Wilson going forward and how do they build around C.J. Stroud to give him a fighting chance going into next year. And instead, we've got two teams that are chasing a playoff spot, which is really a testament to not only you know the coaching staffs of both places have done a nice job, but I, I give a lot of credit to these two quarterbacks, man. They're, they've done a nice job. C.J. Stroud playing above and beyond anything anybody could ever imagine on the Houston side of things. And Russell Wilson reverting a little bit to form, you know, protecting yeah. the football, playing smart. When he has to use his legs, he'll use his legs, being efficient. It's just uh, it's been fun to watch both these guys play. So it has been. And let's start with the old man. Let's start with Russell yeah. Wilson. This this is a guy that um, had struggled early in the year. People were saying that this Sean Payton experiment is not going to work out. You can't just drop Russ in a Sean Payton offense and it magically work. And then just all of a sudden, it, it's like a switch flipped. He's not going to put up MVP level numbers, but I don't know that he's ever been that guy. I mean, it, you, it's an insult to call a guy a game manager. But he's yeah. one of the best game manager type quarterbacks we've ever seen. And that's what he's playing like now. I pulled up his numbers this week and just, you know, you do the projections out if he's yeah. on the pace that he's on. And it's right in line with a lot of his early year Seattle uh, production. You know, he's completing close to 70% of his passes. He's going to go over 30 touchdowns. He's going to be under 10 picks. Like that, that's just winning complimentary football. And it's doing things right at the end of the half where you've got to have a drive to go down there and get points. They do it. End of game situations, he's been very clutch. Obviously, the Buffalo game is a, is a great indicator there. I also think, Ryan, as some of these other teams we've talked about, um, the games haven't got away from them. You know, you look early in the year, I pull the numbers here from the first six weeks of the season. Remember that they start off one and five. Oh, yeah. Uh, their, de their defense, the 70 burger from your Dolphins is a big part of that, right? I, rem but I remember that well. Yeah. I bet you do. 33.3 uh, .3 points a game they were giving up uh, weeks one through six, 440 yards, and they only had six takeaways. Since then, week seven through 12, they're five and oh. Uh, they're only giving up 16 points a game, 325 yards a game, and they've had 16 takeaways. So, yeah. Russell Wilson has always been best when you have what? You have a defense, you have a little bit of a running game to complement him, and now they've they've got that, and that's the formula that they've they've uh, stumbled upon here. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, as a Dolphins fan, the Monday after that game, I was stunned that I didn't wake up and see oh, tweets Vance Joseph. That Vance, Vance Joseph yeah. had been fired. I was stunned yeah. by that. That said, uh, to your point, after that Jets game where they gave up 31, the Jets couldn't score 31 right now in three weeks. Um <laughs> They gave up 19 to the Chiefs, 17 to the Packers, 8 to the Chiefs, 22 to the Bills, 20 to the Vikings, 12 to the Browns. I mean, that, that's one heck of a turnaround on that defense. No doubt. They've had the pieces. You know, they just need to get comfortable. I give, you know, Vance so much credit here. Think about this. Think about coaches and the message that they give to their players. Hey, dominate your role. You know, don't just do your job. Let's, it, it's team is bigger than, than the individual. Well, how about when that message comes from a guy who had to humble himself as somebody who was the head coach in this organization a few yeah. years ago, not that long, I think it was 2018, to come back into that same building where you were fired, humble yourself, come in as a defensive coordinator, and and then get just mollywopped by the uh, by the Dolphins. I mean, if ever there was a reason to just be like, this is life is not, not going working. well. Yep, not yeah, working. and then and then he just sticks with it, and I think that's a that's a powerful message to come from your head coach or from your defensive coordinator, uh, the way that he's able to do it and the way they're able to do it. But they've always had players. When you look at them on the defensive front, they've got Baron Browning back healthy. Him and, and Nick Benito off the edge are two fastballs. Um, Allen, who they brought over in free agency, the defensive tackle spot from Arizona, has been a really good player for them. 
And then on the on the top of the defense, even though they've had the suspension uh, with Kareem Jackson back there, yet Simmons is still a great player. Uh, they, they've got a lot of pieces on the defensive side of the ball, and I think that's you can't talk about the offense and Russell Wilson without mentioning the defense and the job they've done. There's no doubt. Other side of this game, the Houston Texans. We'll talk about one of the more surprising teams uh, of this NFL season so far in just a moment. A reminder, DJ Football with Daniel Jeremiah of the NFL Network is presented by MyBookie.ag. Code next round when you sign on at MyBookie.ag. They'll give you a 50% deposit match up to $1,000 when you use code next round. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere. MyBookie.ag. Code next round. Also, Manscaped.com. This is the handyman. It's a great travel razor, great home razor. Compact, easy to use, gives you a great shave with a handyman. Just one of the many great products they have at manscaped.com, which are great gift ideas in this gift giving season. They've got the beard hedger, it's got the dial guard so you don't snap a guard off at the wrong time and gap up your beard. They've got the weed whacker, takes care of the nose hair and the ear hair, the lawnmower, which takes care of the full body, including the undercarriage. So you can make sure you take care of that with a proper razor and uh, don't the uh, don't hurt something you shouldn't be hurting. Also, <laughs> the boxer shorts, uh, they've got those, the great male products, manscaped.com. And because you're watching DJ Football, you get a great discount. DJF20, DJF20 saves you 20% off your initial order at manscaped.com. Uh, really quick, um, every now and then you use a term and you don't really know. I Molly know Wapped? Somewhat. Molly Wapped, was that the term? Molly Wapped. Yeah. Do you know what Molly Wapped is? I, Urban uh, Dictionary. Uh, Oh, you made you it know, up. Yeah. Urban no. Dictionary. Molly Wop, The act of pulling one's shirt over their head and beating them in the face. Usually a- accomplished by punching one in the nuts as well. So oh, that's, wow. uh, that's the undercarriage. Doesn't sound fun. <laughs> in the undercarriage. Yes. Yeah. Uh, doesn't sound fun. So it did not. Go. But I think it was an accurate description of what the Dolphins did to the, uh, <laughs> the Broncos. I think you used the word properly. It was There's correctly. No it was correct usage. Yeah. yeah. Can yes. you use that in a sentence? Yes. The Miami Dolphins molly whopped the Denver right. Broncos. Thank you. That is right. molly whopped M-O-L. <laughs> this is a game for playoff positioning. Both these teams have the same record, um, which is so surprising with the Texans. I did not see this coming. Yeah. D'Amico Ryans, first-year head coach. C.J. Stroud, rookie quarterback. Normally, you put rookie quarterback with first-year head coach. You're you're doing well if you avoid a 1-16 much less be late November, early December contending for a playoff spot. No, it's been incredible. And, you know, CJ Stroud to, to come in there to not only show, you know, all the arm talent we knew he had, you know, the, the ability to make every type of throw, um, but then the playmaking ability is displayed. You saw that a lot last week with him extending plays, yeah. making things happen. So winning on schedule, winning off schedule, the poise, the late game poise that he's showed, you know, for the most part, being able to, kind of slow his heartbeat down and then relying on another rookie in tank Dell who's uh yeah. who's just set the world on fire you remember early in the season Ryan those were my two my two sleepers I, know. I, I was know. one for two on tanks I got one tank right I got one tank wrong <laughs> yeah tank Bigsby was the other one in Jacksonville that was your uh, yeah. fantasy sleeper eh, not great eh. uh, yeah. but tank Dell you nailed that one um listen CJ Stroud it, it is a look you guys that do the draft stuff, you've got to break these quarterbacks oh, down. Man. And people hold you accountable for years on the way you break those down. And I always point out, even the NFL doesn't get it right. I mean, they don't know. They don't know. You no. can't watch college film and say, this guy is a can't-miss NFL quarterback. Nobody ever said that about C.J. Stroud. Nobody thought he was a can't-miss. And look, he's still got a long way to go. But you're always going to compare him with Bryce Young. And it's not entirely fair. There are different rosters, different situations. But early on, that comparison is so heavily in favor of C.J. Stroud. It's weird how, you know, the same is true of Herbert and uh, Justin Herbert and Tua. Yeah, you know, Those yeah. guys come in together. They're drafted close by. You're always going to compare those two. And that's been a race where one's ahead and the other will pull ahead. Um, right now, C.J. Stroud is so far ahead of Bryce Young. I don't know that Bryce could ever catch up. Yeah, well, that's another video for another time of the the challenge facing the Carolina Panthers yeah. in order to give. They've already fired. They've already fired a coach. Yeah, yeah eleven games in, so they, yeah. they've got some roster uh, construction to to do in the off season. But when you look at Houston, um, yeah, they had look they had a much better offensive line in place. They've got some intriguing weapons around him. Slowick's done a great job uh, play calling, designing the offense around him. But the majority of the credit still goes to CJ. I mean, CJ's been unbelievable. And, you know, it's always funny. You, you go through and you study these things, and then you watch them on NFL field. And 
I had look, I like just about everybody else I know um, in the league, at least had Bryce as the top quarterback and CJ yep. behind him uh, at number two. And then you watch me like, gosh, he's so much bigger. He's so much stronger. He can still yep. move around a little bit. Like what the heck was I thinking? You know what I mean? Like there's that, that realization. It's easy. To, it's easy to go, uh, go there, but it wasn't as cut and dry. It wasn't. Um, this is on the heels of Dwayne Haskins who hadn't been great. Yep. Justin Fields, who hadn't lived up to it, and you're sitting there thinking, "Well, okay, you got all these numbers at Ohio State, but is this somewhat manufactured? Um, you know, what, how does this translate?" Man, he is—he has been unbelievable, and I think a lot of it's due to not only his intelligence but also his work ethic. From everything I've been told behind the scenes, there, this this dude grinds and he works. D'Amico Ryan's does what that makes him right now probably your front runner for NFL Coach of the Year? What does he do so well? Well, I think he maximizes his players. Uh, you know, I think he gets his guys in a in a position that they have a, a chance to make an impact. And you can look at the way he's used Will Anderson on the defensive side of the ball, um, finding favorable matchups for him, and not necessarily being stat driven, but being uh, you know, hey, what do we need to do to, to win the down, to win the series, to win the game? Uh, he's done a really, really good job of that. And I always look at teams that are playing a lot of young players. Mm-hmm. You know, in coaching, a lot of times we don't talk, we don't connect it to teaching. I think D'Amico Ryan's not only a good game day coach, I think he's an excellent teacher. And one of the reasons why you've seen this team, you know, just continue to develop and get better. Broncos at Texans, they're in Houston. Early CBS window for that game for some AFC playoff positioning, believe it or not, as we enter the month of December. All right, he is DJ. Uh, this is DJ Football. He's Daniel Jeremiah, the NFL Network show presented by mybookie.ag. Code next round to get that 50% deposit match up to $1,000. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere at mybookie.ag. Also, manscaped.com, code DJF20, gets you 20% off your initial order at manscaped.com. He's Daniel Jeremiah of the NFL Network, and this is DJ Football.